created that form because we put it on the preventive maintenance schedule. You know, did we not communicate clearly? What, what can we do to reduce those complaints? Um, we try to look at almost every time it rains. If we have any problems, we try to look to see how we can prevent going back to that same spot if it's possible. And we try to be creative in such a way as to create documentation that when the opportunity ever came that we would get FEMA reimbursement for any reason, that we would be take every opportunity we could to get more money by providing historical maintenance records. Um, I know FEMA pays a lot for restoring to pre-disaster condition, which has to prove that you have a uh, maintenance program before it qualifies. So this year we've been working on creating historical data on a lot of those tasks that we do to be able to do that and opportunity arise, but and to be more accountable to keep good documentation of everything that we're doing, to send everybody out in the morning with a plan and come back being able to measure their production and to keep historical information on the roads where the county manager calls, we want to have an answer. And, and the historical documentation to go along with it. Um, some of the challenges that we faced have been, you know, it's uh, long-term employees leaving. We've been spending a lot of time with employee training, operating equipment, different positions, so that we'll be in a position to maintain the same service as those employees are going. And then, of course, we'll talk about the equipment last. If you, you want me to go ahead and get through it? Well, let me touch on something just so that I'll have my information. You mentioned your issue with long-term employees leaving and then the need to do additional training. Are we losing long-term employees due to retirement? Yes, sir. Based yes, sir. On
to the sites. You're providing supervision for it, but yet you don't have the workers to go out there and do what they need to do. So really, in some cases, you may be expending some of your resources and not getting the trash picked up. I mean, is, is, do I hear that? Well, or not well, as efficiently or as aggressively as you might right. be as aggressive. If we don't have at least six people show up, we don't go. We just don't go. This is not worth the money for the gas and the fuel we get. Then, if we get out there and we um, don't have production, we just turn and come back home. And nobody gets credit. So, and then they're usually when they show up, they're one step about to go to jail. So they really need those hours. So they'll pick up the truck. <laughs>
So he told me that, that they were going to do that and that ones that were not doing it, they would either begin to do it or they would rotate out of, you know, they come out of the program. Well, so, I, so I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, what I started doing was tracking who the doctor moves. Okay, I good. Understand. So that, like, at the end of the year, I could send the county manager or Aaron an email that said, here's your doctor rose and these had zero activity. There you go. Or pick up. So that way, by improving, either take the sign down or, That's you know. It. That's well, it. I was wondering, you know, I know it's a 10 workload. Do you feel that if you send maybe 20 or 30 that work on it, you have been completed? Well, the, the 10 work orders were the 10 requests that he made for us to pick up garbage. Those 10 work orders he put in, and it resulted in 63 bags. So, so he put those in. Right. He didn't get it from the oh. right. And when he does have, I think he was working uh, real close with code enforcement, some about some of the areas, but I think that more pertains to neighborhoods and not necessarily voting. Well, that's why I think we're leaving too, and um, it's just interesting. I'm a bad guy. Did I hear you? Did I hear you correctly when you said just then that you you had to have somebody that had to execute and work ten work orders, and you only picked up sixty three bags? Yes, sir. That's ten requests that resulted in sixty. I mean, but you know, that's 63 that we didn't have to pick up, so we're doing it. <laughs> we would have picked it up had they not picked it up. So, these are the areas of. But you would have done it more or less with one work board, though, than with 10. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> these are the areas of illegal dumping sites across the county. Um, the colors that you see that look like districts here are just the code enforcement officers area of assignments. The circles you see, the, the closer you get in and, and the darker the color, the greater the intensity. Um, so we follow up in these cases when we can identify who's done the dumping. Um, we are prosecuting these successfully in magistrate court. I've been going to court and, and following those outcomes. Um, and the code enforcement officers have gotten really smart in that I know most of you all have heard that you know we can dig through trash and find someone's mail and that sort of stuff. If you've got a site where multiple people are dumping and we find one person's mail with one person's name on it, that person gets credited with that entire, so that works. But they've done things even um, as smart as appliances. Um, if they can, if there's sometimes an identifying sticker like these appliance places will put their sticker on there. They'll get the parts number or the, the number sure. off that and go back and track. And we have found owners and gone back and charged people through those methods. So they're really creative with trying to find something that's identifiable. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it just, it's the phone. They charge them with illegal dumping. How much? Um, if there are not um, chemicals and car parts and hazardous materials, there that they can charge at the, at the charge them at the state level. Um, they go through state court, they go through magistrate court, and the maximum fine for magistrate court is a thousand dollars. It just kind of depends on how big it is. They don't pay that much. Though. No, it's usually on a first time illegal dumping. You're looking at with the court costs of everything somewhere between three and four hundred dollars. Well, would that cover the research? To Tag out on the it just depends on how quickly they can do it. I mean, some of that stuff they do with a phone call. Sometimes they have to go there. Yeah. They don't pay court costs and a thing? They do. There's a fine and then there's court costs on top of that, but that $300 or $400 includes both of those things. Okay. Okay. I don't like to say, I just want to make sure to see if anything we can do. On our end, uh, to maximize his services or what have you. It just, but I look at these numbers and then I think of that, that's that meeting um, that I was in and I just to see uh, are we maximizing uh, his services? Probably, we probably could if we had the privilege of dictating to him what he did, how, what, what work he was working on. We probably 
Well, the county manager, we were, as Mike, we were, you know, having a discussion about places and centerators, different avenues. Um, I'm the lady of the line if you right. call the location. Well, unless they were yeah. this past time, they were backlogged themselves. Yeah. They had, yeah. Well, we, we stopped high our ground in the yard, and it's still there. And the only reason it is is because I want to get crispy so we can crunch it down and get more in the truck. Because I only charge like $26 a truck load. And it doesn't matter if it's 10 wheel or 40 yards, so I was going to let it dry and then crunch it down in there. Get more food. <laughs> but so, I guess we have to. Sorry, Texas, don't worry. I just want to know we have an attorney or somebody that they bring to the yard. Well, we had a request by uh, the uh, same private company who wanted us to yeah, work with them and allow them to grind. Uh, uh, Considering. And so, they want to lease a couple of acres of property near the shelter and public works and uh, we did not do that because we didn't feel like we could just use that one entity we'd have to make it available for any and all to be able to do that and this last form uh, advance did agree to go into some areas that they were primary providers uh, and they collect waste at no cost for those individuals and all of it. So we're going to continue to work on the suitable site. Um, but as of today, I would say just we only have our yard. But both vendors, both vendors, when the storm was going on, they, I mean, advanced, they had the yard ready to go. I think the issue is there is that when you have a storm together again, you're going to see the agency and the community come together to try to help resolve the problem because it's not an everyday issue. I know the experience that I had with talking with a few of the, of the citizens in the county from the standpoint of the last storm. Really what they wanted was to put it on the side of the road and you come pick it up. I mean, that's ultimately what they were really looking for. Well, that situation resolved in some of the concentration in the subdivision by the local provider agreeing that I will come and pick it up for you. you know, or here's a container. I think in some cases they may even, they had a couple of drop sites and they put some containers on so that the folks could take it to there. But ultimately when people clean up their, their yard with large debris uh, and lots of it, they just say, listen, I need to get rid of it. I need somebody to come pick it up. Because it, it is what it is, and public works is extremely busy on just clearing the roadways and then getting that debris picked up after they cleared the roadways. Their backlog of work is extremely, uh, extremely deep. And then to start saying that we're going to run a route through the county and the subdivisions picking up yard debris, uh, you've got to be very, very cautious about that at the same time. But I think that, that as was stated, do have an issue such as a major storm that came through and near our communities, you'll find that we'll, we'll utilize the resources that we have. Local providers will utilize their resources to serve the need. And that's what I, I saw on this last one. And I just I just complain about the fee. I guess that's the thing. You have to keep saying, you know, they pay. <laughs> well, I'm not, hammering, I'm not hammering those folks, but a lot of them have just about assumed, are you going to come pick up the lids out of my yard? I mean, it just gets that close. But sometimes it's trees, literally trees are blown over, and a lot of folks don't have the means to have a tree cut up and all that debris moved. Uh, it means basically they've got to get a tree removal service as if come in, as if they were going to take that tree down, they would have to come in and pay those people to clean that debris up. It was such a great organized effort when we were at the emergency operations center, the sheriff's department, 911, fire, and public works, we were all at the same table. So I was recording the locations of all these down trees from all the mm -hmm. different agencies. Um, made it better for us. We 
we start our cleanup effort, I already had organized method because I knew where they were. Right. You know, I knew where the trees were, so that went really well. Of course, our, I call it the neighbor curve, but we were out there with. Thought we would uh, take a break. Uh, Steve is uh, going to hang around for a minute. If y'all want to ask him anything about that, Robin's here for a little bit. So. Okay, good.